10-0 New Mexico State as Rocky Long's defense has been unable to get any kind of pressure against the New Mexico State offensive line. And his defense will try to go back to work here on a first and 20 after a penalty against New Mexico State on the final play of the first quarter. The Aggies find Jordan Bergstrom over the middle, picks up a couple of yards. His helmet came off, so he'll have to leave for a play. Pick up a couple of yards. Still second and very long for New Mexico State. You know, there wasn't a lot there for Jordan. He had that under underneath kind of reserve route, and everyone was covered downfield. So Andrew got rid of the ball smartly, but not a lot there. New Mexico State scored on each of its first two possessions, punted and flipped the field position on its most recent drive. McDonald with nobody in the backfield finds the first catch of the season. That's caught by Ravion Moore. And he comes over the middle and gets popped pretty good. He was whacked in there by Nat Burre. Another third and very long for New Mexico State. Two possessions in a row. You know, Matt, our Nat doesn't make that make that tackle. That is a big play there because Rocky came with everyone. He was blitzing. Nice play call into the blitz where you're going to dump it off to a screen. Nat makes the, the saving tackle. Ravion Moore, the redshirt freshman from Tucson, getting knocked down by Nat Burre, one of the best players in the Mountain West defensively. Third and 15 for New Mexico State and a sack. Penalty marker thrown on the sack. Jake Feely comes in there and applies the heat. That is his first sack of the season. But again, we have a penalty marker thrown back there. After the Aggies converted three of their first four third downs, empty on the last couple of tries. Yeah, you know, and San Diego State 0 for 3 there. As you can see, the third down conversion, and that's really Holy a telltale of, of a, kind of an anemic offense penalty that can't get going. Fourth down. The penalty was a hold against New Mexico State, obviously declined, and for the second possession in a row, New Mexico State goes 3 and out. It was it was good blitz coming from uh, San Diego State where caught McDonald and we held. It was a penalty up front, but maybe you had to because you had were bringing the whole house. Rocky Long, the head coach and defensive coordinator of San Diego State. Watches Cale Chapman Brown punt it away. Another tremendous kick for the Australian. Tim Vizzi will try to return it again for the Aztecs. He is brought down at the 37-yard line. Not a bad return. Yeah, you know, that wasn't bad at all. If you look from up here, you can see a whole line where they set up a return and he almost got there. There was one guy that got the elite on the other side of the line and, and really made the tackle, but you pick up that one block, that's a, that's six there. It's a return of close to 20 yards. Vizzy averaging about three and a half yards per punt return, so having some success there as you see Bart Miller try to coach up the offensive line after the Aggies give up a sack on a third down on the last possession, setting up San Diego State with a first and 10 at their own 38. Offset eye in the backfield. The ball's on the ground. New Mexico State picks it up. It's Darian Johnson, the scoop. And the Aggies will have tremendous field position. We talked about turnovers in the open. The Aggies get the first break there. So, so now the important thing is with this turnover, you have to do something with it. Let's see what happens there. It looks like he just dropped the ball. And, and, and New Mexico State was just opportunistic. They were there, pick up the ball, try to move something, but didn't kept it. So let's see if they can make something happen with that turnover. Kaler looked like he had butter on the football as he took it from the center. No pressure, no handoff. He just dropped it. And New Mexico State will have possession at the 30-yard line with a 10-0 lead and 13-22 left in the first half. Aggies going deep. They find it on the far side of the field. It is complete to Gerald Brown. He was looking for somebody deep, but he checked down to Brown. Nice job to go through the progressions. Yeah, he did. He checked the whole side from you know, right to left, came back to Brown on the far left side. Lots of nice protection back in there. We talked about that being the important one because that took you know, a good three, four seconds to get that play off. Great protection up front by uh, the offensive line. Another trip to the red zone for New Mexico State. They're a perfect two of two tonight. They'll go for the end zone, looking for the tight end. Andrew Dean, touchdown, New Mexico State. What a pass. You know, lots of lots of people in, in uh, on there on Andrew Dean. It wasn't like he was standing wide open. McDonald took his time. What a beautiful pass. He just dropped that thing right down the chimney, right into Andrew Dean. Good catch by Andrew Dean. But again, nice protection on the offensive line. Plenty to cheer about in Aggie Memorial Stadium. New Mexico State 
Just over two minutes gone by in the second quarter and scored for the third time. And the PAT try is blocked. And this one might go the other way. David Lamar is going to score a defensive two-point conversion for San Diego State. You don't see that every day, Danny, but 16 to two the score, but it's hard to feel bad about going up by another touchdown. Yeah, you know, there's the good the good news and the bad news. The good news is you're able to figure out a way to actually get in there off of, off a of, off of fumble, but the bad news is you let them get it to themselves. The Aggies score after getting the turnover. 16 to two, an odd score here in Las Cruces. Well, New Mexico State goes to the tight end for a 15 yard touchdown pass. Andrew Dean catches his first score of the year. And then on the block, protection just broke down in the middle. Yeah, you know that, even though you, you score six, I'm sure the coaches are down there saying, you know what, that cannot happen again. So San Diego State gets a defensive two point conversion on the block, PAT returned for two points. So they turn a negative into a positive. It'll be interesting to see how that momentum shifts if San Diego State can use that to their advantage. You're, you're right, Jay, didn't think about that. You're right, if they can actually go back there and rally around that, then that could be something they can turn, start to turn this thing around with. But the Aggie defense has been almost impenetrable. 170 yards by the Aggie offense, but they have surrendered just 12. Already San Diego State has gone three and out on three different occasions here as we're just a tick over two minutes into the second quarter. This possession will start at the 25 for the Aztecs. They've struggled to get the ground game going. Kaler will go to the air, getting pressured up front. He'll just have to throw it away. The initial pressure was made by Calvin Cruz, the senior from Littleton, Colorado, who had never recorded a sack, nearly got his first one there, and forced a bad play for San Diego State. And you know, there was nowhere he could go with the ball. As much as he looked and had time and got out of the pocket to buy some extra time to look around, there was only two or three guys in the pattern, both of which, or all three were covered, so he just had to eat the ball. Quinn Kaler, who had a good start last week, has watched Doug Martin's defense really make him uncomfortable here in the first quarter plus of this one tonight. He's two of seven, five yards passing, and he's carried it one time for eight yards. Back to the air. This time he finds his receiver, Ezel Ruffin, who had a couple of grabs last week against Oregon State. Ahead to the 35-yard line. Very close to the first down, and they will give it to him. You know, Quinn had lots of time back there. He sat up in there. It's an out pattern, and so the, he just goes a quick one, two, three, throws the ball, gets it out quickly, and a nice pass, a nice catch. Junior Quinn Kaler transferring in from Diablo Junior College, walked onto the team, made the first start last week at home against Oregon State, goes back to Ruffin on first down on the screen, and he's dragged down by an arm at the 42-yard line. Davis Kazar is up there with the grab. Kadeem Thomas Davis also in there to help him out. Pick up six yards, setting up a second and four. You know, six yards at a pass is not a bad, not a bad uh, number as well. So quickly get the ball out, and you go one on one, and you just look for a physical, offensive uh, receiver to kind of just make as many yards as possible. New Mexico State with a 16 to two lead. 11.45 left in the first half. A second and four for San Diego State at the Aztec 42. Lots of heat applied, and it's another incomplete pass as San Diego State has struggled to move the chains tonight. They'll have yet another third down and long. Well, Davis Casares puts lots of pressure on there, and there's nowhere you could go with the ball. So even if there was a sliver of hope trying to get the ball out, it really couldn't do much. But, but because Davis was right in his face right away, and you can see Davis at the bottom of the screen coming in there, gives him a little pat. Not much there anyway. Clint had the, had the coverage on that. Willie Mobley got the pressure on Rocky Long's quarterback. Willie Mobley, quite a story for New Mexico State. His fourth Division I school in five years. Third and four for San Diego State. Over the middle, and it's complete. A first down, they go to Tim Vizzi, the backup wide receiver. Transferred in at semester from Ventura College. And he gets the first down for the Aztecs, and they are into New Mexico State territory for the first time. And you know, I think they found something here, Jay. If they can get some time back there where Quinn can sit in the pocket and wait for some receivers to run around, they're gonna find the seams. In that case, we're in a zone. Aggies are in a zone, and he finds the seam and sits down in the zone. 
Aggies by two touchdowns at home, looking for a first win of the season. San Diego State trying to move the ball for the first time after three three and outs in the first quarter. They go to Janelle Pumphrey, the true freshman running back, his first carry of the night. Native of Las Vegas, hit behind the line of scrimmage by Clint Bernard. The Aggies, another negative play defensively against the San Diego State offense. You know, New Mexico State's defense has just been swarming. The last play you saw gang tackling, we talked about gang tackling, the importance and the keys of the game. You know, from a defensive standpoint for NMSU, we had one sack, one QB hurry. It really makes it harder for the offense to get in that rhythm when they're in your face all the time. The line of scrimmage into New Mexico State 48, and Kaler will have to burn a timeout. The first one taken by San Diego State in the ball game. The defense has really caused some issues for San Diego State. Six carries, six yards for the Aztecs on the ground. And that's after a season, Danny, where Rocky Long's offense put up 220 yards a game rushing a season ago. And you know, Coach Toledo, who calls the offense there, is a good coach, and so they're going to make the adjustments to find out what they need to do to get the offense running. But, but so far, you're right. That, that makes it really hard to get anything going when you base your offense that says we're going to be a power, power ISO type offense and then throw. It makes it tough if you can't get that running game going. Rocky Long, former head coach at New Mexico, now in his third season at San Diego State. He replaced Brady Hoke, who left the Aztec program to take over Michigan. Bowl games each of the last three years, the first time the Aztecs have ever done that. They have struggled here out of the gate in 2013, and they're having some trouble here tonight, trailing 16 to two. Out of the Aztec timeout on second and 11. Kaler wants to throw a little bit of pressure up front. He finds Pumphrey out of the backfield, but it is snuffed out. Brian Bonilla penetrates and moves the ball back on the other side of the midfield line, setting up another third and very long for San Diego State. You know, Brian got inside the offensive guys and went out there, a little screen. And so Brian kind of snuck his way through there. Clearly, San Diego State had more players. There was just one. Brian Bonilla was there, happened to sneak behind there and makes a, a very important uh, tackle to create this third down play. The freshman, Kale Aalua, with the pressure up front, forced the quick throw by Kaler. As we go under the 10-minute mark, another third and long. Third and 13 from midfield for San Diego State. On the play action fake, he has some time to throw the ball and finds a man. It's Ruffin again, has the first down inside the 10, and he's down at the 9. Actually, they're going to rule him down back at the 11-yard line, but that's the first time we've seen New Mexico State secondary break down. You know, we talked about they might have found something here. This is what they found. They found if you can figure out a way to give Quinn a little time in there, that his receivers will find the seam. In that case, here's some bad tackling by New Mexico State. But he had lots of time to sit back in there. Look how much time he has. No one's really pressuring him. Steps up in the pocket, makes a great little pass on a, on a nice uh, sit and find his seam and just sit there and wait for the ball. 39 yards on the pass and catch between Kaler and Ruffin. First and 10 at the 11. They can get a first down at the one. They go back to Muema. This time he finds a little bit of room to run. He picks up five yards, gets down to around the seven. He's brought down by Treshawn Nixon, the linebacker. You know, as, as uh, San Diego State's starting to get a little rhythm here, it really, it really makes it hard for New Mexico State because the only time they've had to pressure him in the past has been on a blitz. So far, they've played base defense. Now they get down to the red zone. Let's see what happens. Moema on the Doak Walker watch list along with the Maxwell Award watch list. Hampered in the first couple of games of the season with an ankle injury, tried to go in the first half. He's back at 100% last week and had a career-high 28 carries. New Mexico State will take timeout. Here with 8.34 left in the first half, and the Aggies out to a 16-2 lead, looking at a second and six for San Diego State at the Aggie eight. You, you know, uh, New Mexico State has had some great stops in the red zone a few games, right? So they can do this, and they didn't have the right personnel. They looked a little confused, and we saw Coach Martin running down the sidelines trying to call a timeout. Great timeout because New Mexico State can play a, a tough red zone defense. Lots of coaching experience between these two teams. There are eight schools in FBS that have three men on staff that have head coaching experience in college football, and these are two of the eight. New Mexico State's Doug Martin, head coach here and at Kent State. Greg Brandon, the offensive coordinator, was at Bowling Green. And defensive coordinator David Elson for New Mexico State was at Western Kentucky. For San Diego State, three head coaches on staff. Rocky Long, Bob Toledo, their offensive coordinator, 18 years as a head coach, and their assistant head coach, Jeff Horton, 
was a previous head coach at UNLV and Nevada. So lots of coaching experience here in this one tonight. Second and six for San Diego State at the Aggies seven yard line and this one is overthrown. Nobody really to throw to. They were looking for the tight end Adam Roberts but the Aggies had him covered in the end zone. Davis Cazares down there in the end zone to force the third down. And part of that was the pressure that, that Quinn had. So the other plays we talked about, they might have found some and the finding was giving Quinn time to throw the ball and get back in the pocket. In that case, he had a little more this last play, a little more pressure on and he had to get rid of the ball. So another third down for New Mexico State's defense. The Aggies have been very good on these tonight after struggling each of the last couple of weeks. Kaler overthrown and again incomplete. Absolutely nowhere to go for the receiver. Kaveh Johnson, the Hawaiian free safety for New Mexico State, ends any hopes of a scoring play before Dylan Denso, the wide receiver. And so what you're looking at here, Jay, is you see all the defenders, the New Mexico State defenders, they're all standing up and kind of wandering around. This is kind of the take a page from the from the team you're playing page and, and disguise as much as you can and try to get pressure on there. Again, lots of pressure on Quinn. Didn't have the luxury to sit back there and find the receiver. West Fear is a perfect eight for eight on field goal tries this season. This from 24. And he remains perfect on the season. 16 to five. You don't see many scores like that with 8.19 to go in the first half. It's military appreciation night here in Las Cruces as Rocky Long's team trails Doug Martin's team as we get a timeout. <laughs> 